I thought we would go over the products that we're going to be using since we're waiting for the mold to dry. Uh, we have our fillers here. This is a Dynalite product. This is uh, kind of like the Bondo product. It's a body filler. A lot of uh, products out there that are available. We have the, the Rage Gold, which is very popular. It's a lightweight body filler, so it's not as heavy as the Dynalite. Depending on what you're working on, you may want to use a heavy or a light product. Uh, the characteristics from heavy and light are how much they're going to build for you. We're also going to use the Select Product Spray Polyfill that I've used in other videos, and you've seen how well that works. We're going to use that again because it's very fast, and I really like to use it. We're also going to show you something new, which is an onion board for mixing your bondos as opposed to cutting up uh, cardboard or ruining uh, this out of the other. This has, I don't know, about 100 sheets of paper on it where you can mix everything on it and just throw it away. We also are going to use uh, mixing cups and mixing sticks. Uh, some spreaders and also the cream hardener for the uh, different um, uh, bondos, if you will, or body fillers. We have a cream hardener in red, white, and blue. <laughs> um, pretty cool. Uh, and you use the different colors depending on what you're working on. So if you want to add a layer, you know where you left off and you know where you're going to. We're also going to need some MEKP because that's what uh, um, activates the spray polyfill. So let's give this another minute and then we'll be ready to move into uh, doing the top of it. Our piece is all nice and dry now. Okay, it's ready to go. We can flip it on over. And you can take a look at it, it's nice and solid. The, the resin has dried on both sides. It's a very solid enclosure, it's got a great frame on the back. Okay, it's gonna be a really good sounding enclosure. Now it's time for us to fill these valleys now. On the mold fabric, it gives you these really nice shapes, but it does have some valleys in it. So if you cover this with vinyl just as it is, it's going to be all ripply and look really crazy. Uh, from here, we need to fill these voids in, do a little bit of sanding, and then we're ready for the vinyl or for the paint if that's what we wanted to do. Now, I uh, showed you the products that we are going to use. We're going to start off with the Dynalite which is the least expensive body filler and probably takes the most amount of effort to do. So we're going to open this baby up. Okay. And we've got our onion boards that we're going to use. We've got our spreader and let me grab a mixing stick. We've got our mixing stick. Now a couple of different ways you can get this out of the can, but the first thing you want to definitely do is make sure you mix it up really well. Depending on how long it's been sitting, you're going to want to mix it up. And if it's going to sit in your shop for weeks at a time, flip the can upside down every couple of weeks so that it uh, self-mixes itself. Self-mixes itself. So that it mixes itself and doesn't go bad on you. Okay? So we've got this nice and mixed up. And I'm going to pull out some material for us to use. Put it on our onion board. There's another way of doing this. I'll show you. Works pretty well. You can just take it and pour the can and then just take your knife and slice it off when you get how much you need. And that works well as, as well. All right, so we're going to seal that up because we're done with that for now. Now we want to add 10% of the hardener to it and it's really a, a visual deal, okay? You can add too much or too little and if you add too little it's easy to add more. I usually go by color. That's 10% by volume, okay? And we're going to mix it up on the onion board here. Mix it nice and thoroughly. I'm just giving it a quick mix with the mixing stick but we're really going to use the spreader to get it mixed up even better. Okay. We want to make sure we scrape all the way down to the bottom and mix it up. Okay. Now I got it kind of pre-mixed, the bulk of it mixed. I'm going to scrape this off my mixing stick. And now I'm going to scrape off everything and kind of make layers on top of layers here. And this is a pretty good color. I'm using the red cream hardener and it's giving me that reddish color. It's not too dark. I don't see any gray. So it's working very nicely. So I'm going to take a nice sampling off of here. 
and I'm going to just scrape it in and push it into the crevices just like so. So I can lay that on there, take my, my spreader, hold it up at a higher angle, fill in where I need, and then run the rest of it out. So now I'm kind of just going by and scraping off some of it because I've got a little bit too much in certain areas. So I'm going to work with and now we're going to work on this corner over here using the Rage Gold. Now this is a lightweight body filler. It works the same way as the heavy body filler, which is the Dynalite. Uh, a lot of guys think that it's easier to work with, it's better to work with. I, I think they're equal and they each serve their own purpose. One's better for one thing, one's better for another. Now if you're working on something nice and small, the Rage Gold is awesome. If you're working on something large then, and you need more filling capacity, then you want to use something heavier. But we're going to do both just so you can see how both of them work. Again, mix them up before you use them. Got the onion board here. Got a nice fresh spreader. And I'm just going to use the uh, pouring technique on this one. Seems to create less of a mess. Just kind of pour it onto the onion board and when you have enough, slice it off. Makes very little mess. Now we need to add the catalyst or the hardener. This time we're going to use blue, 10 percent. Okay. We're going to take our spreader and mix it up nicely. There we go. Call it Rage Green. Spread it out just like before. in the gaps. Now we're going to check on our other stuff here. Okay. It's really hot and ready. Okay. So now's the time to sand it. And we can knock off the tops of this very quickly while it's still tacky. Now it will clog your sandpaper. We'll ruin the sandpaper. But that's okay because time is money. And so we want to knock this down very quickly. And we can do that with a heavy grit and doing it at the right time. Now I've sanded the, bolt, the high spots down but there's still a few low spots and you can see them in here as they're a little bit shiny. They're a different color. I'm going to show you a trick that we use in the auto, bo auto body industry to uh, find those low spots. It's called dusting. And what we'll do is we'll dust with a different color, something dark. And now when you sand, you'll sand the paint off right away and then the dusting will stay on the low spot so you can see them a little easier and get a really nice smooth finish. And now you can see the dark spots or where I sprayed the black spray paint and that's where you're going to want to sand to get it all nice and flat. Let's check the Rage Gold here. Okay, it's nice and warm and ready. Okay, so I'm going to knock the high stuff off right away. Using this brushing motion, kind of like a file, and also makes it easier for me to see where I'm sanding. So that's how you use the Rage Gold and the Dynalite. 
Now, we're going to have to sand these down a bit more, and then we're going to do the whole thing in the spray polyfill so I can show you how that works. That's my favorite. You shoot it one time, you sand it one time, and you're done. The only drawback with using stuff out of a can like this, where you have to spread it on, it's going to have different valleys and unevens, so you have to do it two or three times. We like the one-step process here at Select Products, so I'm going to sand this stuff down, get it ready, and then we're going to use the spray poly. Now I've sanded it all down, and trust me, when it comes to sanding, use as many machines as you can. I'm sure everybody's got a six and a half inch uh, DA sander. There's two different types. There's this one that's a palm sander. It works a little better. It doesn't uh, wrench your wrist as much. Now I'm sure everyone's got a right angle die grinder. And not all of you have, but you must get, this is a three inch or a two inch die, uh, DA sander, okay? You gotta get those. And I've sanded it down with 40 grit. I took some of the 40s and I cut them into little squares and uh, just touched up on the inside, right where the speaker is crucial, where it's gonna fit into it tight, and uh, made sure that it's all set. I'm just gonna blow it off very quickly. Okay, now it's ready for the spray poly. Now I've used the spray poly in the other videos. I'm going to use it again in this one. This stuff is just awesome. You want to make sure that you agitate it very well, shake it up, stir it up, because think of it as liquid body filler. And if you don't shake it up, all the body filler is going to be in the bottom, all the liquid is going to be on top, and you're just going to be spraying air, spraying chemicals out, and it's not going to fill. So flip it upside down. If you have this product in your store, you definitely want to flip it upside down every couple of days. It's expensive, you know. so you want to use it, but it's a one-step process. We did a rough sand, we're going to spray this, sand it one time and be done with it. It's a little bit noisier in here because I got some good ventilation going. When you're using this product, you must wear a respirator and you have to do it in a ventilated area. For those of you that don't have the ability to do that, use the Rage Gold or use the Dynalite, but I highly recommend that you use this product and you'll see why when we're done. What do we got there? 650? All right, 650 milliliters. That's what we're going to use. Just like the Rage Gold and the Dynalite, this product will sit fine in the cup until you're ready to use it. Now, one of the big differences is the catalyst, and don't mix them up, okay? You cannot use MEKP, which you use on resin, to catalyze the other two, the Rage Gold or the Dynalite or Bondo, any of those. And the uh, cream hardener, will not catalyze the spray polyfill. So make sure you get it right. MEKP, now this is about double the percentage that you use on resin. So we have 650 milliliters. So 1% uh, would be six and a half. We're gonna go to 2%. So we're gonna go for a nice 12, 13 cc's of MEK. Now, I got that ready to go, I've got that ready to go. Since we're going to be using a spray gun, we're going to want to mix it up, put it in the spray gun, shoot it, clean the spray gun, put the spray gun away. So we want to have everything ready. You can't really screw around because you could ruin your spray gun. Okay, even though I'm finished, I'm going to let it flash for a minute and spray the rest of this on here. Make sure I got a good coverage. Okay, now you can see why 
that is so much better, faster than using the paste. This stuff is incredible. Now that will take about a half an hour to cure and then we're ready to sand it. We've got our 40 grit sandpaper and I usually just stock the 6 inch and the 3 inch because they have an adhesive on the back. You can fold them in half and get into the little crevices with the smaller pieces. I also have the 6 inch DA and the 2 and a half inch or 3 inch DA so we're going to use all of those pieces right now but it's all looking really good. I'm going to throw my gloves on. I do this to save my skin because when you're using 40 grit sandpaper it'll just chew your skin right off. So let's see here. Oh, that's looking good. I'm just kind of testing it in some areas. Before I hit it with the uh, DA sander, I want to make sure that it's thoroughly dry and ready. And it's definitely ready. All right, it's definitely ready. So we're going to grab some air and a dust mask. And we're going to go to town. As you can see, It'll turn the lighter color, but it'll still have some uh, pop marks in it. And those are the low spots. So you want to be aware of those low spots. And those are the spots that you want to get out. So while I'm sanding in this area, you'll see them disappear. And as soon as they disappear, you want to move on. You don't want to stay on that spot because you're going to get it too low. So that part right there is perfect. That's exactly what we want. So I'm going to finish it up here. Now the 6 inch DA Santa works really good in these larger areas and these larger curves. But when you have to get in tight into some of these smaller curves or right around in here, you want to switch over to the 3 inch. And I've got uh, 60 grit sandpaper on it so we can get into these little holes. There you go. That's what we're looking for right there. Alright, so we've gone over the 6 inch DA, the 3 inch DA, now the right angle die grinder. And that's what we're going to use to take this edge off. Make sure you wear your safety glasses and be careful. <laughs> all right. All the way back down to the wood, nice and flat. You want to make sure that you sand all the way down to the wood on the rings, okay? Because remember, that's the only way we know that the speaker is going to fit flat. Any kind of body filler can make that uneven, as you can see right in here. Okay, you can see I'm almost finished there. All the way down to the wood, very important. Now I'm putting pressure this way to get as much of that as I can. I've put a good hour into sanding this baby down. I want to show it to you. We've got all the rings down to the wood. I've sanded all the spray on polyfill. I broke through in some spots as you can see but not to worry about it because we're going to be uh, vinyling the piece and uh, we don't need to be so crucial when you're doing vinyl. Now if we were going to paint this we would probably spray it with another light coat of spray poly, then lightly sand it, go 120, go 220, 400, and then sand it. But we're going to do vinyl, so really 80 and 60, and you're ready to go. I do recommend you go over it with your hands. Now, I've only used the 3 inch DA and the 6 inch DA, but I do recommend that you go over it once with your hands just to kind of give it that, that once over. Make sure there's not any huge bumps that the machine's made. Make sure it's nice and smooth. 
And then after that, we want to test fit the woofers, test fit it in the car, and then we're ready to wrap it. I mean, we're really close. And then we'll start on the trim board. So I'm just going to give this my once over, make sure that it's nicely shaped, especially on the big curves. And then we can do some test fitting. That one fits perfect. It's even got about an eighth of an inch for vinyl here in the corner, which is important. Test that one. And I'm checking around the edge of the woofer to make sure it's going to seat all the way down. Here we are at the trunk, or hatchback, I guess, if you will. It's sitting waiting, begging for some ba for some base. So I'm going to put the enclosure in first. And as you can see, she fits nicely in there all the way down. Now we want to keep in mind, you know, the outer edges. This one's pretty okay. The only one I'm really concerned with is the back one. And now the baffle board will go in place right there. Again, we want to keep an eye on this back part here and also make sure that it gets mounted nice and square in the car so it looks good. Putting the last piece of the car back together here. Putting in the thumb screws. Not putting it in permanently, just temporarily. Now, I have some cool ideas. I'm like having a little bit of fun with nitrous. Right in here, putting in a pair of nitrous bottles. And over on the other side, putting in a pair of nitrous bottles. Our next step, keep in mind, I want to make this removable so that, you know, if I want to try out a pair of 12s or maybe a single 15 or an 18, I want to be able to take this baffle off without destroying the entire enclosure. And it's a good idea depending on, you know, if this is for you or for your customer, because products always change. So we need to figure out a good way of securing this. And we can put a nice piece of gasket tape around the edge and that will seal it, but we really need to have it held down strong. So what we're gonna do, is, so we're gonna take some three and a half inch MDF blocks and we're gonna secure them in the corners, one in each corner underneath the baffle attached to the enclosure, just like that. And then we're going to get some nice bolts, either stainless steel or black oxide, and we're going to bolt it down in place. As you can see, I've put in these blocks that we'll be able to secure the top to all the way around. I also anchored them and fiberglass them in, so almost welding them in place. So the enclosure is in and set. We have our panels in. Okay, the whole car is pretty much put back together. We still have these side pieces to work with. Now, our next step is we want to bolt the enclosure down. And then we also want to bolt the baffle board to the enclosure so that we can get started on the sides. Now, I've purchased some screws, stainless steel. These are uh, 3 8 of an inch. I have one that's an inch and a half, and then I have a uh, Allen head that's two inches. And we're going to use the inch and a half to secure the enclosure down. Now this is for two different reasons. One is for safety and two is for sound quality. The more rigid you can make the enclosure to the vehicle, the better it's going to sound. And plus, if you ever get an accident or your customer gets in an accident, you're going to want the enclosure to stay where it's at. So you want to use some very nice strong bolts. And what we'll do from the back side of the car is we'll put some uh, aluminum discs and then spray them with undercoating. So we have those are ready to go. We're going to do a minimum of three, maybe even four bolts in the pan, silicone those in when we're doing our final installation, and then also mount these here and have four of those for the top. Okay. Now these bolts, I have washers for them as well. For now we can just push them into place. 
and we're going to clamp this baby right where we want it. So it doesn't start moving when we start drilling. I'm going to check my tolerances again and grab my tape measure and I'm going to measure up here see what our distance is from the carpet. We're looking like two inches. Now that's a little bit more. Two and an eighth. And a little bit more than an eighth, so we want to bring this side up a bit. Now these parts, certain parts of the enclosure are flat. You got a quarter inch of fiberglass and then you got a three quarter inch piece of MDF. These parts that are tapered like this, I had to fill with resin when we soaked it in there. So these are solid resin here. And right where my drill hole is, is where we want to go. Try and keep the dirt inside. There we go. Perfect. All right, we're ready to make our pattern and pull the pattern from the both left and right side of the enclosure. And you can do this in a variety of ways. You can use just paper, cardboard, uh, whatever you want. I'm going to show you a new technique that I've learned that works very well. And it's using that I-beam filler, which is very inexpensive. But since it's designed to conform to shapes, it works really well. And you'll be able to cut a pattern out in one shot as opposed to doing it three and four times. So I'm going to show you that now. So the first template we're going to make is going to be 11 by, let's say, 26. We've got our 11 by 26. Now, naturally off the roll, this will have a nice straight edge. So you want to put that straight edge up against the straight edge that you want. So I'm going to tuck this in. I know it's hard to see on the camera, but I'm tucking it in where we want it. Okay. All we need to do now is take our magic marker and mark in the crease that it naturally folds into. Even if you have to do it just an inch at a time. Try and do this so you can see what I'm doing. So there's our current piece that I'm going to cut on the outside of the line. With our awesome scissors here. Get our speaker cable out of the way. Okay, it's looking good. We got the front is nearly perfect. We're right in here, we could trim some more off. So I'm going to grab the marker and mark right here where we need to start our cut and then actually take out the rest of the magic marker and it should be perfect. Now I have all my templates for the front, the side, all ready to go. And with just some minor adjustments, we'll be able to make the top templates as well. Here we are at the table saw. I got my jigsaw handy as well and we have the left side pattern to the car. I've got some half inch MDF. What we want to do now is finish up our layout. We want to take the pattern and lay it on our MDF with a straight edge. Okay. Then we want to take the two nitrous bottles. We've got the half rounds that we made. 
We want to position the nitrous bottles right where we want them. Making sure that the end here we know is the plastic of the car so we can't go past that. The width is pretty easy. We go the width of the bottles plus the brackets six inches and now the length our maximum length here is going to be 15 and a half inches. That's going to be our maximum. So 15 and a half by 6. So we're going to cut that piece right now. So we have our piece, 15 and a half by 6. And now we want to place that on top of the template to make sure that it doesn't overhang. We can see that it overhangs. So we'll have to trim that part off. Alright, so we want to bring in our template. Put our piece of wood back down. You can do this with anything. It could be crossovers, it could be nitrous bottles, whatever. It doesn't really matter what you do it with. Now we have our pieces all laid out for the nitrous bottles. And let me show you this one here. And they're both identical. We've got our brackets, our bottles, our base, everything is there ready to go. And I have both sides done. Now using the same procedure as before, we need to make another template so that we have the trim board that will go over the top. So we're going to cut out another piece that's going to sit on this beam here and be our trim board and we're going to cut a window out right here where you'll be able to see the NOS bottles, the NOS bottles. Now I have this template up in the front and that template up in the front I'm thinking that we're going to do some grill metal with uh, maybe a piece of wood, give it some depth. So we're almost done. We're getting real close. Next, we need to prep our bases for the nitrous bottles. As you can see here, and I hope they don't tip over, We've got our pieces all made and now I'm going to show you how to secure them and we can do them in a variety of ways. We can use the old fashioned wood glue and brad nails but uh, we're in a little bit of a hurry. Uh, we want it to be nice and strong so I'm going to do one with the Duramix, the super fast adhesive and we'll do one the old way so we do one of each. So our first step is to have our square ready, have our pieces ready because that stuff dries super fast. We're ready to go. So I'm just going to tilt them back. I'm going to bring the material up. I'm going to shoot all four of them. I'm going to put them in place. kind of eyeballing it right now. And then I'm going to take my square, make sure they're right where I want them, make sure they're square, because before you know it, in about 20 seconds, these babies will be dry and we will not be able to move them. But like every install, you want to make sure that both, peaches, both pieces are matching. So we're going to bring these pieces up together in the front here and we want to make sure that the rows, once we take the bottles off, all the rows are lined up together because it'll be funky to have one set like this. So make sure your rows are all lined up 
and then make your pencil marks. We're going to use the wood glue and the brad nail. As far as strength, I would say that both of these are very similar in strength. It's just the wood glue, we're going to have to give it many hours to dry, and the Duramix we can use immediately. This is really good glue, it's starting to dry already. I don't get that out of most wood glues. The next product and procedure I'm going to show you is flock. The easiest way for me to describe this, and I'm sure a lot of you have received the trophy from time to time, is the bottom of the trophy, the green padding, the green cloth on the bottom, that's flock. And that's what it was originally designed for. And we have a little mini flocker here, which is a little pump. We've got the flocking powder. It's actually a fabric. And we have the glue and a one inch brush. It's very simple. We're gonna take these two pieces, we're gonna cover them with the adhesive and then uh, pump the flock right onto them. So let me get this open. Ooh, that looks like it could be shaken up a bit. Let's close that bad boy up. Give that one a good shaking. It's as easy as painting. Just take your brush and paint it all. I'm talking about every square inch. Everything you see, you want to be painting it. All right, I'm going to close that up, put it on the side. Then we're going to take our flocking tube. <laughs> take the flocking tube, man. I'm going to fill it up with some of the fibers. Okay, uh, put a little bit more in there. There we go. I'm gonna put the top on it. And it's very easy, just pump it on, just like this. Okay, those are both done. So now we're gonna let them dry overnight and I'll start working on the other trim boards. Here we are at the drill press and I've decided what we're going to do with our mounting screws for our baffle board. Now since I've already screwed them in, it's going to be very tough for me to cut any larger holes around them, but that's why you use a drill press and some clamps. What I've got here is I've cut with my Forrester bit some samples. Okay. These are the stainless steel washers we're going to use. And if you can see on this one here, we got some room, we got some play in it. Now we're going to be wrapping this enclosure with vinyl, so we can't necessarily use this one because there's no play in it at all. If we were going to paint, that would be the right bit to use. But since we're going to vinyl, we want some play room in there. So this is the one we're going to use here. So I've got my Forrester bit all set up. I've checked it, I've spun it around, I've come down on it, making sure that we're dead center. I've even just by hand spun it, take a look at it, make sure, make any adjustments we need to, and then we're ready to go. be cautious when you're drilling you don't want to go too deep so you want to hold your bit right up against this one and see how far down you want to go so now this combination will fit right in our enclosure 
nice and flush. It'll look really nice and we'll be able to roll that vinyl right into there. We're ready to put the enclosure back in. Okay, as you can see it fits in real nice. I'm going to reach under and make sure, yeah, I got a good access to the threading on all the screws. Now we have our sideboards made. Uh, we have our bases drying right now. And so uh, the next step will be to make our top trim board with the windows in them. Vinyl it all and then we'll be done. Wire up the woofers. We let the suede dry overnight, the flock. As you can see, they came out really nice. All we need now is to get some of this excess out of our way. You never want to reuse this excess because it could have uh, dirt in it, glue in it, whatever. And so we have our two pieces there. And now they're re ready for the nitrous bottles. So we can set those right in place there. I'll give you a nice close up of this. So those are ready to go. See how beautiful they came out. Real nice backdrop. The next thing we need to do is take our trim boards, our edge boards, that are going to cover these. And just as I showed you earlier, I made a pattern out of the filler. I traced it onto a half inch piece of MDF. I cut it out. I've test fitted in the vehicle. I sanded it a little bit. You want to make sure that it fits nice and easy because we're going to wrap this with vinyl or carpet depending on what you're going to wrap it with. You want to make sure that you leave room all the way around the edges for it. Now this is going to go right over top of these nitrous bottles but we want to see inside so we're going to have to cut a hole in here and then I'm thinking we'll put some grill metal underneath it. It'll look really nice and that piece will be done. So let's do that now. We've got our, our board ready to go. I've measured the size of the nitrous bottles and I determined a window size. This window size is going to be five inches by ten and a half inches. I then I placed it on here. And I'll spin it around so you can see a little better. I placed it on here and I've measured from the back of the plastic in the car to where I want the window to begin and also from the enclosure to where I want the window to begin. That's an inch and a half from this side, five inches from this side. And so that'll tell me exactly where I want the window. So now that I have my piece cut and I know what size I want my window, I've cut some one inch strips. I'm sure you've seen me do this a million times before for cutting out windows. But we're going to use these one inch strips we're going to place it exactly where we want it. Now we can take out the center board. Just give it a little tap. It should come out. There we go. So now we have our template in place. Now if we were to take the router bit, half inch router bit or three quarter inch router bit, we could cut this window and it would give us a nice half inch radius or three quarter inch radius on all sides. But I want to make that radius a little larger. It'll be easier to wrap and it'll look a little cooler. So I've taken one of our three and a half inch speaker rings and I've cut it up into four pieces. And what we're going to do with this is attach them to the corners and run the rabbit bit or not the rabbit bit, but the router bit, right along those edges. 
and then that'll give us that real nice radius. If you're going to use this technique, you need to make sure that your cuttings of the speaker ring are exactly the same length. So just make sure that they're all the exact same size because if one's longer, one's shorter than another one, you're going to have different radiuses. So I'm lining them up at the edge of each side. Once I have it right where I want it, I'm going to tack it in place. Okay, there you can see our jig ready for a flush trim router bit that'll cut out our window and that'll be ready to go. All right, back from the router. And as you can see, we've got our hole cut out perfectly. These are a new set of tools that we call uh, wands, magic wands. And these are excellent for working on dashes. They're made out of plastic, a real rigid plastic. And they're also good for taking this stuff apart. There we go. Without damaging anything. That one's pretty much ready. Let's do the next one and then we'll be ready to sink in some of the grill metal. What I'm thinking is that we take some of the grill metal and we wrap it out an area where we can put some grill metal and that'll look nice. So then we can roll the vinyl in, attach it, put some grill metal on here. When we put it in the vehicle, it'll look awesome. We've got our two pieces. As you can see, I put a nice half inch rabbit all the way around these pieces. And I went a quarter of an inch in because we're going to wrap this top piece with vinyl, wrap it all the way over, and then put the grill metal right inside. Okay, we've got some of our heavy duty grill metal. Uh, what I've done is I've cut a piece six inches wide because that's what I measured the inside to be. And the easiest way to cut this grill metal is with a metal blade and a jigsaw. Just make sure you wear some safety glasses. So our next step would be to cut it lengthwise so that we have a square to start with. And I'm using an awl or a center punch, something sharp that will uh, take the powder coating off so I can mark it right where I want to cut it. And it's fairly easy to cut since there are circles as perforations. The, the jigsaw goes fairly straight. No big deal. So I'll find my marking here and we'll cut it over. And if I stick it in here, it fits this way. It also fits in this way. So now we just have to cut the four radiuses and the piece will fit right inside. All right, we've got our piece cut out. Fits in there nice and tight. Looks cool from the other side. We could even round this edge if we want to. I'll probably do that, put a little eighth inch round over on here so the vinyl rolls in real nicely. And that piece is just about completed. The only other thing we're going to do is put legs on it so that it stands in the car nice and flat. All right, we have our pieces completed. We've got our rabbits on the back. We have our grill metal, fits in nicely. Okay, we got both sides. I even have a piece for the top that has a piece of grill metal in, in it. Okay, so it should look really nice. I'm going to show you all this. And now we're ready to cover everything in vinyl. So let me grab the vinyl and the adhesive and we'll go to town. The last thing we want to do 
before wrapping everything in vinyl is make sure we test fit everything. Now I bolted the enclosure in, it's nice and tight. I'm going to bring our side pieces in. Really don't need the grill metal in place, we know that fits. But we want to make sure everything snaps in. It shouldn't fit too tight and it shouldn't fit too loose. There's our other piece here. Also want to make sure that they're going in level. And that's our last test fit. So as you can see, everything is fitting nicely. Everything looks good. So now it's time to wrap in some vinyl. I've got our new carbon fiber vinyl. This is the blue. We're going to do blue on the center. I'm going to do black on the trim. It'll be really awesome. It'll, it'll highlight that uh, blue suede. We could even do blue neon later on. It'll look really hot. A couple things you want to make sure you do, especially to your enclosure before you wrap it with vinyl. Number one, scuff it with 80 grit. Number two, take some acetone or some type of prep or cleaner and make sure you wipe the entire piece, piece down because even your own sweat will inhibit the adhesive from sticking and make sure you get in all the crevices. This is very important. Once you've done that, then the second thing you want to make sure you do is you use a good adhesive. We're going to use the same gun that we use to spray the polyfill. We're going to use the uh, Select Products 206 which is a contact cement and it's designed for upholstery. Beware of laminate adhesives, okay? It's not what you want to use. You want to make sure you use an upholstery adhesive or contact cement. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to spray the mold with the adhesive. We're going to spray the back of the vinyl with the adhesive. We're going to lay it on there, start from the center and work our way out. I'm going to get, grab the heat gun so we can heat it in certain areas. We're going to do relief cuts. I'll give you the close up on all of that right away. Let's go over everything you're going to need to cover this piece perfectly. Okay, we have the vinyl now. This is not like our heat form vinyl that I did in our fiberglass video part two. So this is a lot more difficult to work with, but it looks very cool. We're going to need some grill cloth. This is our Sebring grill cloth. White even, if you can imagine. Now you're asking me, what do I need grill cloth for? Well, I'm going to show you. The reason I got white is because it was laying around. All right? We've got the 206 contact adhesive that we talked about earlier. This is our newest adhesive. This is 513 and this is designed primarily for vinyl and what it does is it, it's non-sprayable. You put it on with the brush and you brush in all the hard to reach areas so that you make sure you get 100% coverage. So we're going to use that as well. The other things we're going to need, we've got a razor on standby, got a pair of scissors on standby, also have our upholstery stapler ready to go, heat gun ready to go. So okay, we're ready to begin. Step one, we've cleaned. Step two, we've got everything together. We're ready to begin. I'm going to take this adhesive, this 513, and I'm going to cover the most difficult spots with the vinyl. Wherever I think it's really going to be taxing on the adhesive. And I mean, you could brush the whole thing if you wanted to. But I'm definitely going to do the center here because I know the center is really the toughest part. So as you can see here, I'm putting it on there. And I know that spraying is a lot faster and we're going to spray the vinyl and we're going to spray this entire enclosure here. But just to make sure that these very difficult areas don't come off you know, for three years, life expectancy of a car audio, uh, I want to make sure that we have 100% coverage on the adhesive side of things. Okay, the enclosure is done, or the baffle board is done. Now I'm going to take the vinyl out. I've already measured it. We've got one yard here, which is plenty long enough. Also, I put down some new cardboard, make sure we don't damage the vinyl while we're working on it. We were spraying so many other things and glues and epoxies and everything you can imagine. 
Now we're ready to spray the vinyl. So I've got the 206 in here. And I'm going to cover it as 100% as I can get it without going crazy. I did my best to give it 100% coverage without clumping it anywhere. So now we need to let these, let these dry. It's contact cement, it bonds on contact. So we let these two dry. Once they're dry, we'll uh, get it on there. So let's give this about 10 minutes. The contact cement is dry. Now's our next step. We're going to take the grill cloth. I basically took a yard and trimmed it in half and we're going to cover the enclosure with it. I keep calling it enclosure but it's actually a baffle. I'm going to peel back the center just like that. Now I'm going to take the other piece and lay it over this side and peel it back. All right, you can even tuck it under here so it's out of the way. Now what that's allowing us to do is that's going to allow us to work with the vinyl a little at a time without sticking it together and having to start all over. All right, we're going to take our sheet of vinyl and we're going to lay it on here. Make sure she's nice and centered. Paying attention to which way she's stretching. She's stretching long ways. On this enclosure, it's going to have so many contours, it really doesn't matter. All right, so there she is. There, I'll back up, back the table up a bit. Now you can see what's going on. All right, so let's do this side first. Let's fold back a couple inches there get our heat gun handy. We may even want it preheated. Got our, our knife, our scissors, <laughs> and you never know when you need a vinyl tool. So you need to have everything handy. All right, so I'm going to put my hand under here and start with the very center, working my way over. Now as we get in this area, we may need a little bit of heat. So I'm going to heat this area up a bit. Not too much. You've got to remember this is not the heat formable vinyl, but this will stretch a bit with heat. So I'm going to roll this edge, keeping in mind where my cloth is. See it's laying very nicely. It'll lay right up to the edge of where the grill cloth is and it won't stick any more past that. Okay. You can even heat it up. Look how nice that came out. The whole piece is going to look like that when we're done with it. Right in here is where you can use your vinyl tool to roll it into that crease where the speaker goes very nicely. It's really tough to do it with your fingers and get a really nice fit. You don't want to drag the vinyl tool along, you want to roll it. And you can see here it's starting to take shape. And these little bubbles that you may have where the speaker goes, I wouldn't be too overly concerned about them since the speaker is going to cover them anyway. But I hate to have little air bubbles in there so you can always just push them down. All right, so there's that corner or quadrant. 
now we're ready to do this back side here. As you can see, I have about half of it done. I've got this piece, got the center, this piece. We haven't put any glue on the back side yet, because we'll flip it over and do that. But she's coming out really nice. And take the grill cloth off the center. Put this back over. Little heat will always help you. And I'm going to pull with this hand. And push it down right where I want it. And keep working with it until it does exactly what I want. And the last piece. There it is. It's beautiful. Came out really nice. It was tough. I gotta tell you, that wasn't the easiest wrapping job I've done, but it came out perfect. Came out really nice. That vinyl is very easy to work with. Okay, now we just need to wrap the sides and the top and then put it all in the car. Are you guys ready to finish this install? I'm ready. Okay, we got our baffle board all nice and covered. We've got our side trim panels covered. We have the grill metal in place. We've got our nitrous bottles. I added another wall here on the side. So when this sits over it, you look in from the side, you still see that nice uh, blue suede. We've got everything ready. I've got my top piece made. And I even have my cables pre-cut for, for the speakers. So now we all, all we have to do is get it in the car. So let's do that. Step one, bolt the enclosure down to the car. I did this last night put silicone around the bolts, ran the speaker wire into the enclosure, siliconed around that as well. Now we need to put one-sided gasket tape. We have two different types of gasket tape, one that's single-sided and one that's two-sided. This is the single-sided, so it's sticky on one side and not sticky on the other side, so the piece of plexiglass or enclosure will come off very easily. So we're going to put that around the border. And then do all the way around with the gasket tape, making sure that we overlap the corners about halfway so that we make sure that the baffle is securely sealed to the enclosure. It's very important. Step two, after putting the gasket tape in, we want to bolt the enclosure down. So let's bring the enclosure in. Set that right in place. Nice and easily. Okay, so we want to put a small hole right where your bolts go. Get your hex bolt. Push that in there and just leave it flush like that for now. And then do the rest of them. Now that we have all the bolts in place, you're going to make sure that you use a nice washer and a star washer and your nut because you don't want this thing loosening up. This thing could be vibrating if it's not strongly mounted and that's going to take away your sound quality and take away your SPL. So you want to make sure it's nice and secure and that it'll never come apart. So we're going to do that now. I've got some wires pre-cut. Now the particular amplifier that we're using, it's a monoblock that likes to see a 2 ohm load. These are 4 ohm speakers, so we're going to tie these two together with that wire. Okay, let's try it this way. Tie that two together. We're going to tie these two together. And then we're going to series them to the amplifier. Okay, so I'll wire those babies up and we'll get moving. We've got all our wires made. 
ready to do the installation of the speakers. This is one thing that I like to do, and you don't have to do it, but it's something I've always done. So I'll take a pressure sensitive adhesive, spray the back of the enclosure, and fill it with polyfill. A lot of times it'll give it a, a deeper base, it'll give it a nicer sound, kind of fools the woofers a bit. So I'm going to do that. And this just helps the spray polyfill stay where we need it. Okay, we're going to take our spray poly and tear it apart and stick it all over the place. So what's nice about having the adhesive, it'll stay right where you put it. Hang a corner too fast in this car and all end up on one side. All right, as you can see, I've got my woofers all in place. I got them all wired up. I brought out my ohm meter. I check it, 4.9 ohms. So we know we've got it wired correctly. And now we just got to screw them in. And these uh, Momo, Polk Audio Momos, come with some really nice screws. Hex heads. We'll get these all mounted up. It's looking pretty good. All right, we got our woofers all screwed in. I'm going to bring in the nitrous bottle for this side. It's right in nicely. I'm going to put in the other one. Time to bring in the side panels. These are done really nice with the grill metal. Those will fit right in here. And they will fit nice and snug. How cool is that? And the last two pieces. Here comes the last piece. So here's our end result. Nice enclosure, nice side pieces, you can see the top piece, very cool. All done. All right, as they say in TV land, that's a wrap. We are done. That was our first in-car video. The hatchback, the trunk, whatever you guys want to call it. But if you enjoyed our, our video, if you actually learned something, please give us a call. The number is going to be on the screen in a minute. And uh, let us know how we're doing, and we'll keep these videos rolling. From uh, Robert Garza Select Products, I'll see you next time.